today we're going to bring the Asus AX3000. It's a dual band system and the model is RT-AX58U. So it's Wi-Fi 6 ready. So that means it's ready for the next generation. It could, um, you could set it up where it could divide the networks or it automatically switches on the network. So if you have a 2.5 Hertz or you have a 5 point Hertz um, item, a hardware, it could distinguish which item it is. Now this one could have 20 to, 25 to 50 items on your network. So unfortunately it's not a heavy duty usage. So we're gonna take a look at it and see what you can get. Now on top of that, it's 160 Hertz on this. So just to give you a heads up on transfer rate, it's pretty good. So wall to wall, you're gonna have some problems here and there. Depends if you have a, a lot of metal, copper, or any kind of uh, material like aluminum, you're gonna have issues on the transfer rates too. So just keep that in mind too. So we're gonna open it up and see what you get and see what we can do with this. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. All right, first of all, of course, they give you all the paperwork. The instructions are very important. Now, a lot of the instructions are a little different from the web and computing for the book. So just to let you know that in, re in regarding logging into the admin, it's gonna ask you automatically up from how do you wanna set up the network and how to set up the password. If you're not familiar with this step, I would recommend you resetting the router then and start all over again. Now, when you're setting up your dual band, just remember that um, when I talked about dual bands, the two point Hertz, it's a, in the, compared to the five points, they're different technology, right? A lot of the older machines that come with the 2.5, um, require that bandwidth only, and they cannot go over the five point Hertz. So, but if you set it up to dual automatically, it distinguishes well on the hardware and it automatically connect you. Now, on top of that, they got great customer service. So recommend you guys calling them. Even if you if, if they don't even support your broadband, they still help you out. And they do a lot of couple of tests. And on top of that, there's a firmware upgrade when you purchase it. So we remember to test that out first. It depends on the model that uh, um, is out at your, during your time. Sometimes there isn't, but I would just go there first prior to even setting everything up after you set up your password username password that's the first thing you need to do make sure you do a um a firmware upgrade right so let's go ahead and start and they start you up with very simple instructions barcode you also have this um system that you could actually monitor from your phone so just be aware of that stuff and and you know it's very simple they give you every string the uh, everything that lights up is supposed to be um, a certain brand that's supposed to be so they have a five hertz two hertz and power and then all the landlines and then the wham of course the most important thing so we're going to go ahead and talk about that so let's go ahead and open it up and see what you also you get so first of all you get this big old hardware and in this one right here it has four antennas all right and uh one two three and four here is it on back of the unit we're going to turn it around so you guys can see in back of the unit you got your WAM connection here this is where your internet is going to go so if you have a broadband you have a um, um, cable or fiber you're going to connect your main line here and the rest of them you're going to share this so one two three and four connections you have to share you could share a playstation 5 a, a computer or another router if you want it, or an extender too you can also do that too now on top of that the power supply and the usb connection this is very 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 uh, useful for me i'll try to explain to you in a way and then you have your of course your power supply now there's an option if you want to use this mostly like a, a share server, you can do that by putting an external drive in here and you could distinguish, you could actually find it on your network and you could set it up to transfer files over. Now, just to let you know that it's powered 24 seven and some of these drives are not meant to be powered 24 seven. So just be aware, unless you have a solid state drive that's not overheating too much, they may have recommendation you could do that too. You could transfer files in here, have pictures, music, all sorts of things. But uh, just be aware that if it stays too long on, on, you might damage the system itself. Not this system, but the actual uh, drive that you're gonna set up. So I had that in the past where I set up a drive and it just burned out after a couple months. Uh, but it was a mechanical drive now an ssd drive which is a solid state drive uh, might last you a little longer but some of them tend to overheat if there's a lot of transfer rate on it so just be aware of that so nothing fancy in the front we're going to take it out nothing fancy other than the lights to give you that everything needs to be on like from power to the wham to the internet to all the five four ports that you have in the back all right so we're going to go ahead and set this up and i'm going to show you a little demo of what you need to do all right we're going to set up the router 
make sure you do put this on your browser, but you have to be in the same environment. That means your connection has to be connected. You have to either connect directly to it or to the wireless. And the wireless is not set up right now at the moment, but I suggest getting a Cat5 a category five cable and connecting it directly to it so you can set it up. Now on your browser, you're gonna have to type in HTTP colon slash slash router.asus.com. All right, I'll put it down in the description so you can know. So let's go ahead and plug it in. All right, this is where we have the actual welcome page, all right? Once you set up the router information that I told you guys early, you just hit create new network. So right here is actually giving you information on how to plug in if you have USB and then where to actually plug in your router. If you get a router from your provider or if you get a router from your fiber provider, you need to connect in that blue area. So just be assured. So we're going to go ahead and hit manual setup, right? On this one is particularly asking you, does your internet connect uh, require username and password? Yeah, you know, yeah, mostly all of them. If you could daisy chain these systems, but in this case, we do want one. So we want to make sure we provide it. Now, if you have a, a network that has a static IP, this is where you actually choose your static IP or just hit automatic IP. It will pick up whatever your provider will actually provide for you, right? So uh, it's something that you're not going to see in the background. It kind of creates your own environment in this place. So we're going to go ahead and hit automatically IP. And let's go ahead and hit that automatically. Once you come in here, we're going to create our network. And this is where you actually create your network name. Um, so when you see your environment, either through USB or through wireless, and you set up a network ID. So network name, we're going to type in admin for now. And this is a wireless password you're going to set up here, right? So we're going to go ahead and set up the wireless password. And we're just going to put test 21, uh, 2021 exclamation mark, right? And doing this, we're going to do this for both of them, right? For the 2.5 and the 5 hertz, right? So we're going to, we have two different networks in here. One separated by an order generation of 2.4 and the other one's a 5. So you can have two individual passwords or you can have one password. And it's up to you. So we are going to create, like I said, the name's going to be admin and the password's going to be test 2021 exclamation mark so we could combine the networks as we get like in this situation we are going to combine the network so let's go ahead and do that here now we're going to create our router name here and for now we're going to keep it a generic name because we're testing it out so we're going to put in asus and then we're going to use the same password like we use everything uh we're going to put test 20 21 exclamation mark and this is pretty much what it is we have to retype it again you could continue to the next page on the next page once it's going to create your network and automatically everything connects in here so we're going to go by the list all right right now it's asking us how many computers are connected in this network uh, what's if you have a usb it will show up in here um, pretty much all the individual information that you just created the the system will automatically generate it for you so we're going to go down the list so let's go to guest network uh, this is very unique and very awesome little feature because I actually enabled them, a couple of them. So any time you have a, a party or you have a neighbor that doesn't have an internet, you can always create an account for them. Now, the next one is pretty easy. This is an, an awesome little thing that Prudential controls are built in, network protections, firewalls, everything comes in here. You don't have to pay for anything additional cost. You could create timelines for when your kids are gonna be online. This is something that I personally use where I, I want them to be asleep at a certain time. So I disconnect all the devices that are connected within our network. This includes um, iPads, iPhones, and, and Netflix, anything you have. Now, network protection is in case you wanna have the extra layer of protection. Now, you could actually type in words to filter out so they won't be able to surf the internet. Now, the next one, this one is uh it tells you the speeds pretty much of the bandwidth that we currently have right now and any device will show up in here and list by list um it will label it and will tell you what's being um transfer either it's uploading and downloading you're going to be able to see all this information now you can have reports done on a daily basis weekly hourly however you want to schedule this stuff this will give you a report of where they've been what has been downloading your network and this is how you find out if other people are and actually snooping in your network too so it gives you a kind of a good control good features now the next one this is a good one that you could set up your usb connection on the usb connection this is where we're talking about you could connect your printer and you could share your printer amongst your whole family too not only that you could put in an external drive and you could share files and it could act like a server there too 
AirCloud. This is where you can actually save some of your uh, doc, uh, your files from your network into a cloud system that, but this is additional cost. Now you can also save your profiles too. Now, if we go down, we can see more information. This is just the basic stuff in wireless, what kind of environments we have, and also the dual bandwidth that we currently have. Things too. There's a lot of features in here. Uh, all this, you don't have to really address it if you just want the basic stuff, but I recommend you come in here and learn your environment. Now, the LAN, this is a very important one. This is your actual provider provides the existing IP that pushes out through your network. And this is the actual, the router that they provided for you that you connect your bandwidth into here. This is where all the information and your DHCP server. Now, if you do buy a static IP from a provider, this is pretty much where you have to come in and set up all that information. They have WAM, they have analytics, VPN, firewalls, and administration. It's pretty much basic, but out of the box, it's ready to go.